Hello, tiny friends. Welcome back to Tiny Keyhole Minis. I'm Jolene, and today I've got a couple things that I'm going to make for the sewing room. Um, I've got all the parts and pieces, well, most of them anyway. <laughs> I do have to figure out a couple more things, but um, for the most part, I'll be using these supplies. And um, I've got this frame cut out that I've had for, gosh, since the beginning of my channel. Um, I'm going to create a standing swivel mirror. And I've got these spindles that I've purchased off of miniatures.com. And these little things are really cool. Um, you get 10 per pack for $1.37. Um, I'm going to come back to these and show you how cool those are. Um, I also purchased these posts. Now, you only get two in the pack for these, and they were $2.60. So, uh, you know, a bit more expensive. You're only getting two, but you can cut them down if you'd like and have four pieces if they're too long. Um, I'm going to be using these for the mirror stand. And I am also going to create a standing shelf um, in another episode with those as well. But today they're going to be used for the stand and they're going to look something like this. Um, I'm going to show you a few more things that I purchased off of uh, miniatures.com before I continue with this project but I do have these sticker decals which is technically nail decals I purchased off of Timu and I cut out a few pieces that I'm going to use um, on the mirror to make it look like carved wood or some sort of carved design um, I cut this piece out with my Cricut machine and it was either chipboard or cardstock and then I just layered a few of the pieces and then painted it. I'm not fond of the paint job. I'm going to be repainting this, but um, this was something that I've had planned since last year, since last September, I believe, is how long I've been holding on to this piece. And now I can finally get to creating my vision for it. So um, I used wood glue just to go around the edges on that to smooth that out and seal it up. This is um, adhesive, flexible adhesive mirror sheets. It's a four by nine or a six. Hold on, let me check. Okay, so I purchased this package off of Amazon a while back. It is very good. It comes in a four pack and it's flexible mirrored sheets. A four pack, six by nine. Um, it is a little, I can't really remember how much I paid for this because it was so long ago, um, but it's worth what you pay. I know that. You don't get as many sheets, but uh, you don't need as much when you're making miniatures. So um, you just want to be sparingly with this. Um, it does have a protective film over it. And when you peel it back, it looks just like a real glass mirror. And I'll show you that later on. Um, and then I've got some wood from Timu um, that I'm going to be using to create a shelf. Um, and I have to figure out how I'm going to put this stand together for the mirror. I'm going to figure out how I want my shelf to look. And, uh, I'm going to be using these pins. I've already created what I needed. It's a, like a little eyelet pin. Um, I do have a pack of these somewhere. Again, I have no idea where they are, so I'm just going to create my own for this project. 
and uh, I'll show you how I did that. And these are going to be the pins that make the mirror swivel. So they'll just go right into the side and look similar like sometimes you see the the pins sticking out of the mirrors. Um, I want to show you a couple more things that I purchased off of miniatures.com. I've got this pack of caster wheels and they're metal and they were only um i think they were only like a dollar a dollar so i'm sorry i'm looking uh they were a dollar fifty for a pack of eight and i did not get eight in this pack now at first i thought it was a four pack and that little one that fell out, I thought that might have been just stuck in the packaging and I was getting an extra. And then I realized while I was recording this that uh, it's supposed to be eight pieces in here. For $1.50, you get eight pieces. I think this was a sale item. So um, I am going to call the company and take care of that real quick before I move on. Uh, with the project but here is the back of the package and I think they're really cool I I don't know what I'm going to use them for I just bought them because they were only a dollar fifty for eight pieces and you can see Kiwi trying to help me out but <laughs> she's funny uh, you're probably going to see her more often in my videos since I am now sharing a workspace with her. But um, I'm going to take care of this and I'll be right back with that. Okay, so I took care of that. I made a call and I just want to let you know that there is a customer service member on their website miniatures.com they're located in atlanta georgia and um an older gentleman picked up right away so you're getting a direct person and he took care of the problem i asked him if he would like me to send these ones back and he said no need he's going to be reshipping a new one and i said well i'd like to purchase a couple more things so can I do that on the phone with you? And he said, certainly. So I purchased a couple more of the posts, the long posts, um, because I would like to have four for the standing shelf. And I want it to be a taller shelf unit. And I purchased two more packs of these since they're only $1.37 because you could do a lot with these. I love these. These are stackable, tiny friends. And I didn't know that until I was doing this video and then I noticed the holes. So you can stack as many as you like to make them longer. Uh, they're a little offset. I don't understand why the hole is not directly in the middle. But if you turn them a little bit, you can't really tell that they're offset. So um, that's what you can do with these. I love them. Um, also I'll be using these to create little thread spools and I believe it was little Gretchen's workshop where I seen her creating little thread spools with something similar. I don't know if they were the same thing, but Gretchen, you can, if you're looking for more of these, you can definitely get them from miniatures.com. You can get a 10 pack for less than a dollar 50. So, um, if you are in need of more or would like to do other projects with these. Um, so you can also make candlesticks with these, like candle holders. I just love these. I love these. So I purchased two more packs while I can. Um, so these were definitely a great find. I didn't know, you know, what I was getting. It's hard to you know, tell what you're getting until you get it in person, especially when it's online. You can't really get a good idea um, until you're holding it. So I definitely grabbed a couple more of these and a couple packs of those smaller spindles. Okay, I also purchased this adorable rooster 
teapot. This was about $4, but um, definitely worth it. I love this so much. I didn't even care if <laughs> it wasn't what I was expecting, but it really is. Um, some of it, it, it's, I don't know if it's resin or porcelain or something, but uh, some of it is shiny, as you can see. There's a gloss on parts of it, and then the rest of it is like a matte finish. And I thought this would be perfect to add to the shelf next to the chicken dish in the kitchen for the farm. So I'll give you a closer look if my camera can autofocus. Let me see. Try to clear it up a bit for you. And I'm sorry about the light reflecting on the mirror sheet, but this is so gosh darn cute, tiny friends. I love this so much. So this is going to go into the kitchen on the shelf right next to that unique chicken dish that is sitting on the shelf. So I purchased that as well. Um, so now we know, now I know, now you know, uh, that miniatures.com is a great place as far as customer service. You're going to get great customer service with them. Um, they've always been one of my, uh, go-to sites to shop on for miniatures, but I never had to call them. So I'm going to stick these in a little baggie so I don't lose them or any more. I think what happened was is some of them must have fell out in the box or when packaging and um, maybe I didn't even realize that some dropped out when I opened the package. I had no idea. Okay, so let's get into today's project. So I'm going to begin with these little eyelets and since they're super easy, it'll be a one, two, three step. I'm just going to stick it right at the end at the very tip where the smallest part of the needle nose is and just twist it right around in a circle. Give it a nice little close and then there it is. And I'll just straighten it out. Make sure the pin is nice and straight. So there you have it. You can create this from any type of easy bendable wire or some little nail head pins like I did. So if you're looking for something like that, that's an easy little fix. Okay, so to begin on the mirror, I'm going to use these decals and uh, place them in the areas that I would like them to go. If I can pick it up, you can see me struggle. Uh, this bigger one is similar to the shape of the top of the mirror. Um, it does take a little bit of time to peel these off. It was quite a little challenge, as you can see. And this is fast time and edited. I struggled. Just, <laughs> I struggled. Um, so I got it off. And they're not that sticky, and that's probably because they stick really well to enamel nail polish, and then they're topped with a top coat. So what I'm doing here is just adding additional glue just to secure them a little more. But this is a great way to add some more detail to any one of your pieces. I would just suggest using a little bit of glue when adding any decals. So this is what it looks like. And this piece measures about five inches and the posts are four and three quarter inches. Um, it's slightly smaller than the real dimensions converted into one scale, but I'm okay with that. As long as it's suitable for Margot and suitable for the room, I'm perfectly fine and happy with uh, it being slightly smaller. Uh, you're really not going to see a difference. So moving on, I'm going to start working on the base or the frame or the stand, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to have to cut one of these pieces off to extend the bottom support bar. 
Um, so I'm cutting it as close as I can to the spool above it because they have spaces in between and I don't want to lose that space. I'm going to lose some of it with cutting it down. I'm slightly and lightly filing it just to smooth it out and even it up. Um, I, I'm not worried about the space being smaller than the other spaces. Uh, it looks better than if it was missing completely. So it's not very noticeable. Now I need to uh, drill a little hole in the middle of the square section of these posts on the bottom so that the support bar can fit right in that hole nice and snug. I'm doing this to both posts and then just making sure it fits nicely. So it's going to look something like this. And now I can add that additional piece to it to extend it. Now, uh, the sides of the frames have a little area that's bowed out a bit, and it just so happens that it fits nice and snug right in the dip of that design on the post. And that's where I'm going to add the little pin to swivel. This will allow the post to be at average height uh, along the mirror. So something like this, I'm just going to line them up and make sure that they're nice and even. Now I have to glue these two pieces together and I don't want to use just glue. So what I've decided to do is glue my pieces into place and you can see the one, the longer post has the hole on the end. So I decided to make a little tiny pin to go inside and help support those two pieces. Even though they'll be glued together, the whole thing will be glued together and it won't, it'll have less of a chance breaking. I just feel like adding this additional support will lock it into place a little better. So I'm using um, super glue and tacky glue for this and then just popping those two pieces into place okay i'm using painter's tape i've lined them up um, along with one of the lines on the mat i'm going to tape them down and mark where i want to put my pinholes on the sides so i'm just using a pencil to mark the areas and then i'll be able to drill little holes in with my hand drill and add the pins. Okay, I'm gonna skip over showing you that part and just show you what it looks like when the pins are inserted. So there it is. And now I'm going to give these two pieces a base coat of black acrylic, but I still need to find something for the bottom part of the frame so it can stand. So let's see what I can find in my pile of scrap wood. Okay, so I've pulled out a couple different pieces and I think I'm gonna go with the arched piece. Uh, they're about almost the same size. The arch is a little bit longer in length and I just like the way that looks better. So it looks more accurate to a real stand. Uh, this is that dry, brittle wood. So I'm gonna have to do some sort of preparation before I can actually add it as part of the stand. So what I'm going to do is mark uh, exactly where the middle is on both of these pieces so that I can drill a hole. And I'm sorry about the focus. Um, so I'm just right now figuring out how I want it. Do I want it to go right up to the square base or do I want a couple of that, those little pieces included, which I do like. Um, leaving a couple of those pieces. I think it just adds more to the design. So I have marked the middle of both pieces and I'm just drilling a hole in and making sure that it fits nicely and this is what it looks like. So I'm just inserting the very bottom of that post in there. And now I'm gonna do some prepping on these two pieces. So I'm gonna file them really well, nice and you know, make sure they're all nice and smooth and uh, shape it just a little more. 
after I file this down, I'm going to use my wood glue and I'm just going to run it right along the outer edge. So around the top and around the two sides, um, this will seal that up a little since it's so brittle. Uh, this will make it look like one complete piece and hide all that. So when I paint it, it won't soak down in those nooks and crannies and you won't really be able to see those pieces that are kind of separated on this wood. Now, this wood is so brittle that uh, it broke, a piece of it broke off. So I just attached it back on and now I'm putting a little bit of glue right over that so you can't really see that the piece was separated so if you're working with this type of wood you just want to make sure that you're super careful when working with it if you're filing or sanding it or shaping it a little more because this stuff is super brittle and super dry but in sense i'm just kind of sculpting with the wood glue so when doing something like this you just want to take your time make sure it's nice and smooth uh, the wood glue is really great and very cooperative it's um, a really nice way to shape and fill so you just want to make sure it's nice and smooth and e as even as you can get it because you can do a little bit of sanding afterwards but it's pretty thick enough where it stays put for the most part. So that's why I love working with it. It'll just give it one solid whole looking piece. So I'm going to set these aside and let them dry and come back to them. Okay, I'm moving on to my shelf. And this bigger piece that I'm working on now uh, measures about three by three. And I've just sketched out a little design on the top part where I'm now cutting out those pieces. Um, the smaller shelf pieces, they measure uh, about three by one inch. So three inches long, one inches wide. Um, now I'm just going to go in and sand what I have cut out, try and shape it up and clean it up a little bit more, smooth it out a bit. Um, as you can see on the um, shelf boards, I have cut out little square sections in the very corner of the front side of the board. And that's going to hold the posts and where I glue them into place. But I've only done it on the front parts because I'm going to use this backboard for the back of the shelf. Once I got that nice and smooth, I'm just going to go in with a couple of my needle files just to the middle part of this design and just try and give it a little more of a design. Um, I've taken my pencil and I have made a couple notches all the way around the top part of this midsection. And I'm just going in and filing right where I made those notches. So those little lines. I'm not sure you can see them very well and I'm not in frame <laughs> very well, but um, I'm just going in just to make some grooves right on those lines that I have drawn on there. And this is just giving it a little bit more of a design. So I'm using two different needle files for this. And I'll show you what that looks like when it's completed. Now I'm going to go on with my second file and I'm just making some deeper grooves a little bit longer just to give it more added detail. So I'm not sure how well you can see this, um, but I don't want to get too fancy with it. I just wanted to give a little bit of an added detail, make it look like maybe her husband has put this shelf together and carved this himself. So that's what that looks like. You'll be able to see it a little bit more once it's stained. And figure out where I want to place my two, my three, sorry, I have three shelves. Um, I'm just trying to figure out where I want to place those. And I know that I want the two top shelves a little bit closer together than the middle shelf and the bottom shelf. I want a little bit more space on the bottom shelf for bigger things to be stored or maybe some fabric to be stored on the shelf. So I'm using my tacky glue 
and I'm just going to lay these down into place. I have made some pencil lines where I want my shelves to actually sit. So I'm going to make some adjustments, make sure that they're nice and straight and set them aside with something heavy to sit on them for a little bit of pressure. Okay, going back to the bottom part of my mirror stand, I'm just lightly filing them uh, where the glue is just to smooth them out a little bit. I'm going to give them a dry fit, make sure they still fit, and they do. So now I can go in and add the glue and put them into place. So this is what it looks like. So I'm using my tacky glue and I'm just slipping them into place, cleaning off any excess. I'm going to give them their base coat of black and set them aside to dry. Okay, I brought you down to have a better view of the shelf where I'm going to install the two front posts and you can see where my little square notches are, my little cutouts. I'm going to add my tacky glue into those areas. Uh, first, I'm just stacking a couple together and gluing them into place because I will need two. And then I'm going to add my glue right into those square cutouts and lay these posts down. So I'm just holding it with a little bit of pressure until it takes hold. And this is what it looks like. So my shelf construction is completed and you can see that the bottom um, half is a lot larger than the top space. And that is because I'm probably going to put like some fabric or bigger pieces on but um, I can show you here's the bigger sewing box it sits on all the shelves very well um, I can put it on any any shelf so she'll need this to store some of her sewing essentials so this is actually going to be installed to the wall okay I'm going to paint this with my antique wax and normally I would put a base coat of my favorite color which is that cinnamon shade um, but it's going to be on real wood and I don't want all my pieces to have the same coloring or painting technique so I'm just going to use the antique wax alone this is what it looks like I just don't want every piece in the house to be painted the same exact way or with the same technique. I, I want several different pieces. So I had to withhold, I had to restrain myself, if you will, from using that uh, shade, which is my favorite shade to use underneath the antique wax. So now I'm going back to the mirror and I have used a little bit of brown uh, with a tiny bit of white to lighten it up and I have painted it I've painted the frame with that brown and then I've left the decals black and now I'm going in uh, with some sponging and a little bit of a lighter shade I added just a little bit more white to that and I also left the sides inside the hole and outside of the frame black. So I'll be touching that up with a little more black paint. I'm cleaning off any of the brown paint right now because I do want that inside and the outside to remain black. You can see here how I left those areas black and this is what it looks like. Now I'm gonna add more white to that brown to create an even lighter shade. And I decided to leave the stand black and just do some dry brushing on it. So I'm gonna do this on the entire stand and I'm also gonna do this on the mirror frame itself as well. Okay, so while that's drying, I thought this would be a great time to construct the mirror. And I've cut out a piece and it's just slightly 
a little larger than the opening in the frame. I've laid it, I've actually peeled off the back and stuck it to some thick craft paper. I'm signing it and then I will attach it with some glue and I've already tried to do this once and I had to redo it. So that's why you see white on the frame. I did sand it so that it's nice and smooth, but there it is. And that's what it looks like. Now for the shelf, um, I'm going to age it up with a little bit of black chalk pastels. Um, I couldn't find my whole box of pastels, so I had to really look for them, but I did find them and um, I've just scratched a little on a piece of sandpaper. I learned that trick from Gianna at Montarsi's Miniatures. So thank you, Gianna. I don't have to sit there and scrape it off with my craft knife into a little container. I could just rub it on this sandpaper. So I'm going in um, into the back parts of the shelves and along the design I created on the top. And then I'll do the posts as well, just to give it some more dimensions, a little bit of aging. I'm also going to do this around the frame of the shelves. I want those edges to be black where I'm doing this right now. So this is the last step before I'm actually finished with these two pieces, and I'm going to come back to show you the final results. Okay, tiny friends, so a closer look at the shelf. This is how it turned out. I am really happy with these results. I love this shelf, and I believe I saw something similar to it on um one of the shopping sites might have been um, Macari or something, and I took a picture of it, and I just, I really love this shelf. So I am definitely going to make a standing unit similar to it for the sewing room. Um, I, I might actually make a few more of these for the house or for my Etsy shop, but uh, I also sprayed it with hairspray to lock in that chalk pastel um, and just to give it a light sheen or shine. It was a little flat. Uh, that wood just really soaked up that antique wax, which normally has a little shine to it anyways because of the wax in it. Um, so I just coated it really nicely with the hairspray. Uh, for the mirror, you can see how reflective that mirrored sheet is. Um, it's like real glass mirror, tiny friends. I love this stuff. Uh, like I said, it is worth what you pay for it. You can see the mirror according to Margot and the size. And it's a pretty good fit. Uh, she can see herself very well. And I am super happy with how the mirror came out. It swivels nicely. It's nice and tight. It stays in place wherever I put it, um, at whatever angle I decide to put it in. So I'm very, very happy with these two pieces. I have one more large piece for the sewing room, and that's going to be the standing shelf unit. And then a couple videos. One is going to be accessories some more accessories. And then my next video coming up, I'll be showing you how I'll be making push button light switches and electrical outlets for the entire house. So that's coming up next, tiny friends. I hope you enjoyed this video today. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, click that like button, subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more of my projects and you haven't subscribed yet if you have subscribed don't forget to hit that top bell notification button to be notified every time i do upload a new project i want to thank you all for being here and and coming in and visiting watching this video today and uh definitely let me know what you were thinking in the comments below what you thought about this project until next time, tiny friends, 
You all have a lovely day and I will see you all on the mini side. Bye-bye.